Hello, and I'm just going to take a quick look at some easy improvements to the sculpting of a couple of miniatures, a few miniatures, um, one type in particular that can really make a big difference to the animation and realism, which I think is an underrated thing. Uh, in miniatures. One of these figures, let's move the camera. This one on the right. It's Gripping Beast Strathclyde Warlord. I'm going to put the camera down so we can a bit of plainer background. Um, He is a fine and energetic pose. I've done a lot of work on him, and this work is what I'm talking about, really. You can see him at the end of... No, actually, during the last video I made on paintbrush care. Um, I have a little bit more room here, actually. Um, in his more stolid state because he is um, unfortunately really galumpen he's rather like a rather galumpen sculpture actually as if he were a sculpture representing a sculpture if you know what I mean um, a life-size sculpture to 28 millimeter figures, um, an animated pose as that, but really rather dead and um, very heavy. This isn't going to work. I'm going to have to have to have some more space. Um, so what I've done is a whole lot of filing down, and I, I, I and and movement as well. Um, one obvious thing is that the distance that he's reared up, I've made it a lot more. Um, I think um, that dramatifies it a little. And then I've pushed this hoof in and back further because they were absolutely even before, just like, um, you know, a fairground horse on one of those rides. This hoof I've pushed in slightly that way as well, and maybe pulled it up a little. Um, so those were initial changes. I worked a lot on this arm, filing it down, keeping the shape, in fact it, taking the shape further. Um, a little bit in there, keeping the sleeve sense, but keeping the structure of the arm underneath. That's quite tricky. But there are other things you can do that would animate this figure that would be um, a lot more simple. This braid underneath from his uh, cloth, saddle cloth, was just completely regular, like a toothbrush. And so I've just cut it in a couple of places with clippers. And I put a little bit of green stuff in there to model the end where a piece dropped off. Same this side. Just to make it less even. Because if a horse is rearing up and you've got all this movement, you wouldn't have this extraordinary mechanical evenness that the figure is supplied with. It would, it would, things would move more irregularly and be more energised. I've added a teeny little bit of green stuff so that the, and also put filed the tail in at this point across across the hair line um, to give that a little, little bit more movement. And actually another really simple thing that you can do is um, I just filed in there, I don't know if you can see that, can you see that? 
Let's try and focus better on here. Um, there's just a dimp in there, which is the turning of the cloak around his elbow, as if his elbow is kind of caught in his cloak, and it's, but it's curving out there. I've also gone in here, so that all of this is much more energized again than it would be because it was just a solid form. It was just like, you know, as solid as that helmet. Had no movement in it. Another slightly tricky thing to do, um, actually there's an easy thing there to just hollow that out under his sword, that was solid. Uh, scabbard, I mean. And then I hollowed, I drilled this out and then very carefully hollowed the rest out so that his reins are free. Um, that gave it a sense of galump and so solidness as well before I did that. So I just think that this figure is now, you know, ready for priming and is, is a lot more energetic and a lot more enjoyable to look at this Strathclyde Warlord who could be any Dark Age Warlord. In fact, he's quite like Gripping Beast's Pender, um, but uh, seated on a horse, which is rather nice. Um, a fine figure, but I think made better by a bit of work, extra work. And it's worth it. So, um, that's that one. But there's another thing. Um, these Gripping Beast... Um, Picts or Irish, I'm not sure which they were, uh, are typical in that they had of this form of, of a figure that's got a, quite a heavy um, tunic, long tunic and cloak. Um, because the mould, when the, if you imagine that the, the um, pressure, I mean, you can imagine it through gravity, but it's actually through spinning, but um, the, the the metal going into the mould, into the figure, through the feet. Um, the manufacturer, well, having to fill all this volume of metal up, one, uh, gives the figure quite thick ankles, partly for strength as well, but also just for the metal supply into the main body of the figure. So... Uh, for, for again, for realism and for a bit more energy as well. Um, here's a footsaw one that I have not worked on. Footsaw are better than Gripping Beast in this light, but you can see that that is a very thick ankle there. I mean, it's it's a bit like um, he's wearing Wellingtons, really, or um, he's some sort of cartoon figure. What I did with the Gripping Beast one figures was to take this plane which goes from the knee down to just above the foot. It's a diagonal plane you can see on the shin and just file that back and then go around the ankle with the thick part of a file, rounded file, at this point and under the calf. And that way you get this, what is now, it's not necessarily fully finished, but is a, a figure that's got a much more elegant leg. <laughs> um, and it has a lot more lift and energy and realism than that, um, you know, booted Wellington look which, as I say, is, was worse in this originally. This could still do with a little bit more here. You obviously have to round the corners off. In finding this um, plane in here at, a, at an angle, you don't want to over-exaggerate. You do, you do want the edges rounded, not sharp. But it's quite an easy thing to do, and as I say, it gives gives the 
figure a lot more um, zest. Anyway, hope that that is of interest. And um, thanks for watching. And uh, see you next time. Cheers.